Welcome to Speak English Podcast with your host, Georgiana. The podcast that will help you to speak English fluently with no grammar and no textbooks. Hi, everybody. I am Georgiana, your English teacher and founder of SpeakEnglishPodcast.com. My mission is to help you to speak English fluently. In this episode, you will learn vocabulary related to virtues with examples. In the second part, you will practice grammar with a point of view lesson without memorizing any boring rules. Before getting started, visit my website, speakenglishpodcast.com, and get the transcript for free. Okay, first of all, what is a virtue? Thanks for asking! A virtue is a positive characteristic of a person. Usually, someone's virtues have a positive impact on others. Yes, I know that sometimes it's hard to find virtues in some people. But if you look carefully, you will find them. Sometimes the word quality is also used to say the same thing. The opposite of virtue would be defect, which logically is negative. It's the undesirable aspect of a person. Sometimes people confuse virtue with ability. They are not precisely the same. A virtue is part of someone's personality, and that helps differentiate them from other people. For example, one person may be wise, and another may not. On the other hand, someone may have the ability to play an instrument, be organized, etc. Okay. Let's look at some of these virtues. There are so many, and I had to make a selection. I think it's quite useful vocabulary. Let's look at the first one. Loyalty. Loyalty implies being faithful to something or someone. You can be loyal to a cause, an idea, etc. You can also be loyal to a friend, for example. It conveys the idea of support. For example, Philip is a very loyal person. Even though the company was going through hard times, he did not leave and stayed until the end. Loyalty is easy when things are going well but more difficult when there are problems. For example, many people are disloyal when they can no longer benefit from a situation. Number two, wisdom. Wisdom is known as being prudent and having good judgment. The latter, good judgment, means that after analysis and reflection, good decisions are made. In other words, a wise person does not make strange or crazy decisions. It has a lot to do with maturity. Example My friend is not wise because he never fastens his seat belt when he drives. Number 3. Serenity. What a lovely word, right? A serene person is someone who remains calm when facing problems. It is a calm attitude towards life. Please, do not confuse it with an unaware person, someone who ignores problems. A serene person usually faces problems, but their attitude 
is relatively relaxed. I like to talk to people who have this virtue because they give you quite a lot of peace. Here's an example. Daniel is a serene person. He hardly gets upset about anything. And the last word for today is resilience. This word became very fashionable in the environment of psychology and even business. In essence, resilience is the ability to face adversity and recover quickly. It involves adaptation, flexibility, and certain confidence to move forward. Example I admire Monica because of her resilience. It turns out that she lost her job two weeks ago, but she's already training to adapt to the needs of today's job market. That's all for today. By the way, if you want to know how to speak English using the right techniques, visit speakenglishpodcast.com and subscribe to my mailing list. I will send you my five golden rules to speak English fluently, and it's completely free. Okay, now it's time for you to learn grammar in context with a point of view story. I'll tell you a short story more than one time. Every time, I'll change a grammar point. I can change the tense or the person. This way, you'll notice the changes in context. Okay, let's start. Tim and his wife Adele decided to have dinner at a fancy restaurant to celebrate their anniversary. They made a reservation over the phone and headed to the restaurant. They entered and a waiter escorted them to a table. The couple looked at the menu and Tim ordered soup for the first course and rare steak for the second. Adele ordered salad and fish. The waiter served them the first course. When the waiter left, Tim noticed something floating in the soup. It was a fly. Tim got angry, and his wife said he could tell the waiter. But Tim said he didn't want to bother the waiter because he seemed too busy and that it was just a fly. So Tim spooned the fly away and changed the subject, but continued to be upset throughout the evening. Let's listen to the same story in the present tense. Tim and his wife Adele decide to have dinner at a fancy restaurant to celebrate their anniversary. So they make a reservation over the phone and head to the restaurant. They enter the restaurant and the waiter escorts them to the table. The couple consults the menu and Tim orders soup for the first course and rare steak for the second. Adele order salad and fish. The waiter serves them the first course. But when the waiter leaves, Tim notices something floating in the soup. It is a fly. So Tim calls the waiter over and calmly explains what has happened. Tim is polite but also firm. The waiter apologizes and brings him another soup. The restaurant owner, who sees what happens, approaches the table and, after apologizing, 
tells the couple that they won't have to pay anything. It's on the house. Okay, it's the end of this short lesson. As you can see, just by changing the point of view of the story, you can learn grammar in context. It is one of the techniques that I use in my premium courses. I recommend you to take a look at speakenglishpodcast.com slash courses. Okay, we have reached the end of this episode. Remember to listen to it several times. It will help you with your English. Do you know how you can help me? You can share the podcast with your friends and family. Tell them to go to speakenglishpodcast.com and get my free mini course. That would mean a lot to me. Thanks. See you soon. Bye-bye. Did you enjoy today's episode? Get the transcript now at speakenglishpodcast.com.